What is going on everybody? My name is Nico and welcome back to another Pokemon BDSP guide video. Today, I'm going to teach you guys how to EV train your Pokemon because it's very crucial if you enjoy playing competitive. Now, I, I know a lot of people have problems with competitive and BDSP. I am one of those people. There are some glaring issues with getting into competitive in this particular game. However, if you're crazy like I am and you enjoy battling competitively in BDSP, this information is pertinent to you. So I decided I would make this video either way so that way everybody knew what they were doing. So without further ado, if this is your first time here on the channel, make sure you subscribe for more videos like this in the future. But let's talk about EV training. So first things first, I will say that if you are looking into getting into EV training, you probably need to know how to breed first. And I have an entire breeding guide that goes into in-depth details on all the information you need to breed the perfect Pokemon for you to EV trade. Because there is a big difference between the two main stats that people are confused about in Pokemon. And those stats are EVs versus IVs. These are incredibly confused by so many people. And I understand why, because they're, they're kind of weird stats. But I'm going to break it down for you here. IVs are stats that Pokemon have at birth. There's no changing them unless you level that Pokemon all the way to level 100 and then give it a bottle cap at the trainer. That's all you can do to change IVs. They are at birth. However, EVs are not at birth. EVs are stats that are gained either by training Pokemon, by battling wild Pokemon or other Pokemon, and or giving them vitamins. Those are the differences. EVs can be changed, they can be lowered, they can be raised. IVs can be changed, only increased at level 100 with a bottle cap. Now the big thing is how to check EVs and IVs. So if you don't have the IV tracker or anything like that, you need to head over to the battle tower. So fly over to the fight area. Now, once you're at the battle tower, you're going to go all the way into the main building. Then you're going to hang a right here and you're going to talk to this guy over here in the corner and they will give you the IV tracker. Once you have it, you can go into your box and you can look at the EVs and IVs of any Pokemon. Now, the difference when you're using the IV tracker in terms of looking at the stats, for example, I'll go to some of my custom Pokemon for my teams here. You can see on screen here, let me hide it for a second. You can see on screen here, I have all of my IVs right there shown for everybody to see. You can see the IVs that this Pokemon has. However, to see the EVs, you're gonna check the summary and you're gonna go over here and then press X. The extended lines that you see poking out show this particular Pokemon's EVs that I've trained up over time. It is a very useful tool to have, and I highly recommend having this EV IV tracker before you go ahead and start training your EVs. So, in terms of training EVs, there are some little details that are worth noting. First off, there is a total of 510 EVs that you're able to give to a Pokemon. However, only 508 of those actually matter. So I'm sure that little statistic is a little confusing, but allow me to explain it. So. For example, if we look at a Pokemon like Infernape, okay, I can spell it right, Infernape. Pull up Infernape here in Pokemon Showdown, go to its EV spreads. Each stat can hold a single 252 amount of EVs. That's it. It can only hold 252. So, for example, big stuff for Infernape, you're going to max out its speed. You want really fast Infernapes being used. So, max that speed out then you're going to go ahead and max you know the attack you want it to be big attacker so those two are maxed out and that leaves you with four points now here's the key thing you have your 252 your 252 this is going to give you your 504 stats that's 504 evs that you use you have six remaining as you can see here it says i only have four remaining this is because it takes at least four EVs to raise a stat point one level. So for example, I'm going to put this point into the HP category. Boom. You see the stat went up. If I remove it, it's gone, right? It went up to 294 from 293. Boom. Boom. However, if I were to put two in there, it does not jump at all. It doesn't move. So you need at least four EVs in a category to increase it, meaning that those additional two that you have left over don't mean anything. So technically you only have 508 to use now there are berries that you can use that will decrease stats if you you know been using a pokemon forever and you really like that pokemon maybe you have a certain connection to the pokemon i know there are people that really like get attached to their starters and stuff like that and you might have weird wonky ev spreads because you've battled so many pokemon along the way that you have stats and spots that they don't really need to be there is a way to lower these so 
The way to lower these are berries. Each berry that you give the Pokemon, and I will list the berries in just a second here, each berry that you give them will decrease an EV stat by 10 points. So the berries are as follows. Pomic Berry removes HP. Kelpsy Berry removes attack. Qualop Berry lowers defense. Houndoo Berry removes special attack. Greppa Berry special defense. And Tomato Berry removes speed. Now, for example, say you have something that has a maxed out speed, like our Infernape we were just talking about. Our Infernape we were just talking about had the 252 speed stat. If I wanted to remove all 252 speed EVs from that Infernape, I would have to give that Pokemon 26 Tomato Berries, and that would remove all of those EVs. So that's how you go about getting rid of EVs. In my personal opinion, I find it much easier to just breed a new Pokemon because getting berries can be a bit of a pain. It's a bit annoying to do. So I would just personally breed a brand new version if you wanted to use that Pokemon competitively. Now we're going to get into actual training EVs and how you acquire them on certain Pokemon. The first way is the vitamin method. And this, in my opinion, is the easiest method. I vastly prefer doing this method, mainly because I'm lazy. This method just is way quicker in terms of EV training Pokemon. So to do this in this particular game, you need to come over to Veilstone City here and you need to head over to the department store. Go up to the second floor and talk to this middle lady here and you'll be able to purchase all of the vitamins that you're able to do. So protein increases attack, iron increases defense, calcium special attack, zinc special defense, carbose is speed, and then obviously HP up is increasing the HP EVs. Now each of these increases the EV step by 10 points. So Again, you would need 26 to get that max amount of EVs for that category. So pretty easy to do. Just farm some money. It's not hard to do. Go battle the two old people outside of Heart Home City, and you'll be able to get enough money to buy a bunch of these and abundance of these and EV train your Pokemon. The next way to go about actually training your Pokemon is through the battling method. So I will say that you can refer to each and every Pokemon that you need to battle in terms of the amount of EV points that they will give you, your effort points that they'll give you here on Cerebi. They have a full list for everyone. You just keep clicking and it'll refer to all of the different EVs that you can get from different Pokemon. Now, the big thing with EV training through battling is to note something. It's that every Pokemon in your party is going to gain an EV point for whatever Pokemon you battle because the EXP share is always on. So... Just simply move any Pokemon you don't want that particular EV on out of your party while you're EV training so that way you can avoid you know messing up and having to use berries to reset. It's just easier to throw the Pokemon you want to EV train for that particular EV into your party and then go train that particular Pokemon. Now there are a couple things that you can include to increase the amount of EVs that you get per Pokemon because typically, for example, let's say we battle a Bidoof. We go and battle a Bidoof. Bidoof only gives one EV point for HP per battle. So you would technically have to battle 252 Bidoofs to get 252 HP EVs. However, there is a way that you can change this and make this go a little bit more quickly. So we're gonna head back over to the battle tower here and we're gonna go inside here to the reward center. You're gonna talk to this lady here and you're gonna look and scroll down what you're able to do is use these different bracers belts anklets whatever the power item you need is and this is going to increase the ev gains that you get by eight every time you battle a pokemon so for example let's say that we're going after bidoofs we want that hp increase we're going to use the power weight the power weight is going to increase our gains from one ev point of hp per bidoof to nine because you add the eight on and then you get the nine points total for battling each Bidoof, which speeds up the process quite a bit. However, there is an additional thing that you can do. This is called Pokerus. Now, I can admit I don't have any Pokemon in this game with Pokerus, so I can't exactly show you. I'll throw up an image of a Pokerus Pokemon here. This is going to double the amount of EVs that you get per battle if the Pokemon has Pokerus, which makes EV training very, very fast and very effective. So, if you add on the eight that you get from the power weight for battling a Bidoof, then you'd multiply that. You'd have nine from the power weight. You multiply that by two if your Pokemon has Pokerus, and you're getting 18 EVs per battle, which means you can do this very, very quickly to get that max 252. And this makes this a fantastic way to EV train because you can do it very, very quickly. So the final thing that you need to know in terms of EV training through battling is just which Pokemon do what, and these are the ones I personally recommend using. First up, if you're looking for HP, Bidoof is going to give you plus one HP EV as I've mentioned this entire video. 
The second one is Starly for a plus one speed EV. Then you have Ghastly for plus one special attack EV. Geodude or Hippopotas for one plus defense EV. Tentacruel for a plus two special defense EV. So that's going to be even quicker. And then you have Machop for a plus one attack EV. Those are the ones I recommend doing. They're the easiest to do in terms of doing the battle method for training Pokemon with EVs. I, again, I prefer doing the vitamin method. I'm lazy. I don't want to go battle a bunch of Pokemon. I just want to rank those Pokemon up in terms of their EV stats very quickly. But that is all you need to know. That is how you EV train Pokemon in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Hope this video was entertaining and helpful. And if it was, make sure you leave a like and smash that subscribe button for more Pokemon videos like this in the future. But until then, I hope to see you all in the next one.